parallel wars are erupting in Syria between President Bashar al-Assad's forces and the rebels, and among the rebels themselves. That is complicating U.S. intentions to resume non-lethal aid to the Syrian opposition, suspended last month after a more extremist faction of Syria's rebel coalition seized supplies shipped to more moderate groups. With ever-shifting allegiances, Washington has no way to guarantee American support gets where it's supposed to go. CCTV's White House correspondent Jessica Stone has been tracking down the details. She joins us now live in the newsroom with more. And Mike, on top of all that, all of this comes as the FBI director confirms that Americans who travel to Syria and return to the United States are being tracked after reports emerge that al-Qaeda is trying to recruit Americans to carry out attacks in the United States. This amateur video claims to show Syrian rebel tanks firing on a group calling itself the Islamic State of Iraq, or ISIS. ISIS is linked to al-Qaeda, raising questions about whether the United States could ship aid to Syria without it falling into the hands of its sworn enemies. American non-lethal aid has been suspended for a month now after another Islamist group, the Islamic Front, raided a northern Syria warehouse in December, commandeering U.S. medical supplies, food rations and vehicles shipped to the Syrian opposition Supreme Military Council, or SMC. We still do strongly support and want to be able to continue to provide non-lethal assistance to the SMC, to the moderate armed opposition, and uh, are reviewing ways that we can uh, restore that aid. While the U.S. is reviewing its decision, it's unlikely to restore such aid until it can be sure it won't fall into the wrong hands again. With the rise of al-Qaeda in Syria, that danger is intensifying. A U.S. State Department official tells CCTV that while aid recipients are extensively vetted, the ability to do that, quote, with 100 percent accuracy is extremely difficult. How are you vetting people who are getting it, given the fact that people are starting to change sides? Vetting is obviously something that uh, has been uh, a priority uh, uh, across the board when it comes to our uh, policy of supporting the Syrian opposition and providing assistance to it. Al-Qaeda's influence in Syria is also an increasing concern at the FBI, where Thursday, Director James Comey told reporters the Bureau is intensely focused on tracking Americans who've returned from a trip to Syria. The New York Times reports that Islamic groups with ties to Al-Qaeda have been trying to recruit Americans in Syria for terrorist operations on U.S. soil. American Nicole Mansfield was killed in Syria last May, and another American convert to Islam, Eric Haroun, has been indicted on allegations he fought alongside Islamists called the Nusra Front in Syria. Haroun pled guilty to lesser charges. And Mike, another interesting number here. The New York Times also reported that a total of 70 Americans are known to have traveled to Syria or tried to in the past three years. The State Department does tell CCTV it is aware of this recruitment of Western foreign fighters in Syria, and they're working with European partners to address the problem. And I guess, Jessica, that has some people asking, is Syria the new Pakistan? Well, it certainly could become that, but so far there have been no reported cases of Syrian-trained Americans plotting attacks here. But foreign recruitment of Americans is really a very real threat. You'll recall, of course, the two men who attempted that car bombing in Times Square back in 2010. They both claimed to have trained in Pakistani terror training camps, and one of them was a naturalized U.S. citizen. Jessica Stone reporting from our newsroom. Thank you.